everybody, it's Tamika. I am here to share with you a super easy and fun interactive flip book tutorial. And I'm going to share with you what I created, but I wanted to show you the paper that I used. It's called Market Street and it's by My Mind's Eye. It's a 6x6 six six paper pad. There's 24 um, double sided sheets of paper. And this is what I have left of that pad. I almost and um, use the entire pad so I was very happy about that of course if you use double-sided paper um, you won't use this much pattern paper but I use plain cardstock to add some stability to my flip book so um, I got this from the expo last year so super cute paper and fun and um, to use in your flip books but just pick yourself a snazzy paper um, it's a good way to get rid of your 6x6 paper pad because you're if you do that you're almost done with one whole paper pad so let me show you what I created and then we'll go to the items that you'll need it's super cute I love it this is a small flip book it's five inches wide and I really like how it turned out very very easy to do and you are making this from scratch so you I do have a tutorial that you can use envelopes to make a flip book um, but you know those vary in size the ones that I use were I believe six inch envelopes so if you just want to make a quick little something to put in the mail this is your this is your go-to right and you have all this stuff at home already so this is what it looks like super super quick and easy um, I just put some flowers together here cut off um, some flowers and poke them around one large flower this is just die cuts from the collection that I layered really simple and fun papers there's a magnet underneath here to keep everything nice and tidy you can use string or you can use a velcro dot it's up to you so that opens up like this and then on the inside here I have a little flip it says this story belongs to so if you're swapping it's good to put the recipient name here I have it adhered with some washi tape and then some double-sided tape underneath. You can't see it because it's clear, but the washi tape don't always stick, uh, stay. So I just have that. You can put a little photo or add some little clips to there if you want. And then I have this little butterfly die cut there. You can add, remember this is your cover piece. So if you're adding something, I would add it on this side. And then it flips open. Nice interaction here. Um, this is an accordion pocket. Let me see if you can see it on the side. See? an accordion pocket so you can put some little goodies on here I just use one of the die cuts uh, things to remember maybe you want to put something there about you or something questions you want them to ask in your return flip book and just to show you what you can put in there I just added some cute little flowers to put in this pocket you can add journaling cards stencils you know CVs, whatever sequence nice place for whatever you want to do there and then it flips open to a half pocket almost and then I just added some more um, just journaling and um, die cuts and stuff on here. This is a pocket. So this would be a good place to put the information. So this is an example. Um, you know, put your information there. and You can tuck it inside this pocket. Or you can even put a goodie inside that pocket as well. Place on the back. And then it takes you to this part that flips open for some more space. You can even make this into a cute little mini album. And then I have a journaling ticket that's attached with some washi tape. So that closes there. And then finally on the end, I have a place where you can tuck some tags into. Cute little angle pocket. I just have another little die cut here and some flowers on the end. But nice little angle pocket right there. And then I just added, this happened to have five, um, well, four journaling cards. And then I made a tag with the leftover cardstock from um, what we're going to use today. So that's that and it just folds nicely over really easy now it's a little bit dimensional because I have the flower pack in there and they're dimensional flowers but this how it would be if and even still I have a flower there but it would be kind of flat too so really nice book um, to have so there we go I'm gonna show you how to put this together Right, so I'm going to show you how to put the base together and then I will give you the dimensions for the photo mats that I use because I don't need another flip book. So, but I do want to share with you guys how to make it. So you need, of course, your paper trimmer, some double-sided um, adhesive, a uh, bone folder, and then I used um, cardstock for my base, plain cardstock so that I can mat 
with the six by six paper pad you'll need three eight and a half by eleven sheets of paper whatever paper that you want to use um, coordinating with your six or paper your pad of paper that you're going to use and you will also need a scoreboard okay so let's go ahead and get started all right your first piece will be cut at five save all of your bits because we will use them so that's going to be five by nine and a half okay and then we're going to cut a piece at five by 11, which this should already be that size. And then we're going to use one of the leftover pieces. This should already be three and a half by 11. We'll need that. And then we'll need a piece at five and a quarter. Wait four and three quarters let's cut it that way four and three quarters by five and a quarter okay and then we'll need a piece uh, four and a half by four and three quarters four and a half by four and three quarters and then from our scraps this should already be three and a half so we need the other side to cut at two and a half, and we'll need two of those. Two and a half. And then we'll need a piece at three and a half by five. So that should be three and a half. Cut this piece to five. And then we'll need a piece at three and a half by four and a half. So three and a half by four and a half and then our last piece is three and one eighth by two and three quarters all right now let's get this trim around the way this is what you have left out of those three sheets of paper and we don't need these use all of the paper so now let's get to scoring get out the scoreboard here so we're going to start out with this sheet that's five by nine and a half okay so find that sheet we want to score it on the nine and a half inch side we want to score at three and then three and a half and then eight and a half all right, and then we're going to give those a good crease. And then while we're here, just to make sure we can distinguish which paper is which, we're going to miter this corner. So this is gonna be a flange piece, so we're just going to take a tiny little slit, see how tiny that is, so that the paper that we're going to put on top will wrap around nicely and you'll see that in a second so just angle the the little flange piece that's on the side okay and set that down okay the next piece that is five by eleven you want to on the eleven inch side cut at or score at four and seven eighths and that is the little tick mark right before five and then a score at ten like so and then you just want to fold over these edges and give them a good crease and then we're also going to do the same thing with this flange that's on the end what I did was match these up so they can line these up and match them up perfectly so they can just be even with no over edges so get the two pieces because these are the ones that will be touching each other and then just follow along what you did before so so there that, that should match up like that okay all right so now we're gonna go to the three and a half by eleven and then we're gonna score at five and then score at ten 
give that a good crease. So the next one we're going to move to is the five and a quarter by four and three quarters. Make sure I got the right. And on the five and a quarter inch side, we're going to score at four and three quarters. And then fold that over. The one that's four and a half by four and three quarters. On the four and a half inch side, we're going to score at four. Fold that over. And then the three and a half by two and a half, these two little pieces, three and a half by two and a half, we want to uh, score that at a half an inch. So I'm going to put it at the two. And then I'm going to score at two and a half, three. You can put it at any mark, just every half inch. So if I put it at the two, I'm going to score it at two and a half, three, three and a half, and four. And I'm going to do the same thing for this one. And this is on the two and a half inch side. Two and a half, three, three and a half, four. And then we're going to accordion fold those. So that means folding it opposite every, you know, every score mark. So the first one goes down, flip it over, back, flip it over, down, flip it over, back. And take your bone folder and run across both of them. Okay. The one that's um, three and a half by five, we're just going to get our trimmer out and cut that at a diagonal. So just line it up on the trim on the trimmer or cut from corner to corner. We only need one of those. So we'll just keep one, toss the other. And that's it. So the rest of the pieces don't need to be scored or anything. All right. So, we're going to start out matching the two pieces that we made the flanges for and put those together. So, this is where you put your double sided tape. And um, so, how my book goes, just so you guys can know, there's this piece here, and there's a little gap. Um, this is the five by nine and a half. So, um, that was on the left, and then the other piece, the 5 by 11, goes on the right. Flip it that way. So you want to fold this flap down, and then add some score tape, or either flap, it doesn't matter. Double-sided tape to that. All right, and then I'm going to take it off and mesh them together. And these overages. I'm going to cut off the overage. What did I do with the scissors? On my tape. I could roll them back, but I don't want any bulk. Alright, so how I'm going to do that is just line up my corners because remember we matched them perfectly earlier. So all we have to do is line up the paper to match like that. So when you open it up, get an extra glue, you should have them evenly together. Just like that. Minus this over glue. So there you have that piece there. Okay. The next thing the next thing we're gonna do is um, now before I go any further, if you're using this you know, if you're doing this, you want to mat your papers before you start layering stuff on top of it. So, um, if you have, if you're using blank cardstock, you want to put your mats on, then you layer your top pieces. I will give you the mats later, but I'm going to show you how to put it together. That way, you can stop and put your mats on, and then continue on with the video. Okay, 
So the next thing we want to take this longer piece here. This was the three and a half um, by 11. And then we want to add double sided tape to you know, fold down that edge there. And you want to add double sided tape to that. on the outside part. Remove the backing and then close this up to match. So then you should have a little pocket like that. Now you want to add some double sided tape to one side of this flange. Just pick one side and I'm going to pick the inside here and then make sure you cover the whole thing and then take it off oh, come on here so then you want to take your what we just made this little tube and insert it right on top of there that's why we cut the edges at an angle lay it down flat so that it can stick to the one side and then now it's attached and you have a pocket really easy right okay so the next thing we want to do is this accordion pocket here so this going to this is going to go here and this piece was um, five and a quarter by four and three quarters that's that piece there so you want to add double sided tape to the bottom flap like that and then you want to grab the oh shoot messed up my score mark and then you want to grab those little accordion pieces and then you want to add double sided tape to both sides of those All right. so on the outside the end pieces so one piece one piece goes there see outside there and then the outside there so you may have to flip it over you just want to do the two end pieces the pieces after you fold it is one on the left and one on the right I'm just going to go there and this is going to go here So you want to release the tape to one on one side and apply it. So here's your bottom piece here facing that direction. You've taken the tape off the bottom and just apply it center, not all the way to the top. Leave a little you know space there, about a half inch or so. And then do the same thing to the other side. Try to line them up the best way you can, although it's not very imperative, but I just want to try to do it. Now remember, you want to layer your pattern paper. If you're using plain card stock like I am, you want to put your layer of pattern paper here first. Then release the backing off your double sided tape on both parts and the bottom. And starting at the bottom, line it up. You're not going on the score mark. See, there's a score mark, there's a half inch gap. Don't go there, you're just putting it on that space there. So line the bottom half with the bottom half of the paper. Make sure your accordions are accordioning, and then lay that down. Now feel free to punch a hole or something up here. And then you have your, your little pocket super cute all right so that's that and then you have your flap here the next thing is this piece here and this is just a open page so what you want to do or a float fold out so you have your score mark your half inch piece over here add some double sided tape now you want to for this one you want to lay this down um, 
when you layer when you mat your paper so because this is going to tuck underneath the paper you see what I'm saying so you want to lay this down first actually and then lay your paper down for this one because the paper will cover this little piece here so you want to just line that up or center that the best way you can without going past that score mark like that and then that opens like that isn't that cute so then you layer your paper so you're, if you're lining it up with your score mark exactly your paper will cover that this whole section and then you can cover that too and then um, the next part is the triangle that you cut so that's going to go here of course you want to layer your paper first and then all you're going to do with this too far up is add your double sided tape to the bottom and the side depending on um, what angle you're gonna put the put this piece you can put it on the left or the right it's up to you I like to put it on the the right hand side because it kind of it won't go out the tags won't go out that way if you have it blocked but you could put it you know flip it and put it on this side but the tags will maybe fall out with well, this way with gravity the tags have a better chance of staying in there so you want to line this up corner to corner exactly and then there's your pocket like that so this big square is actually um, cut out for a tag um, piece so this is the um, three and a half by four and a half so all I did was cut an angle and then I took that piece of paper that I cut lined it up with the opposite corner matched it up perfectly and then cut it then I punched a hole in the middle you don't have to do that and then to layer your paper you would do the same thing cut it the exact same size and then um, so let's just say you're doing this if this is your pattern paper cut it the exact same size of the tag right then cut the piece to match like so and then take the pattern paper full pattern paper and then cut off just like sliver you can use your trimmer but just cut off slivers all around the sides the two sides and the top that way you can get an exact layer to go on top of your paper and of course you'd have to do you know all the way around you cut off a sliver here cut off a little sliver there and then one at the bottom and then that way see you have like the perfect layer tag. I don't know if you can see with the two colors. Alright, so that was that one. And you would do the same thing for the diagonal. You have that leftover diagonal piece, measure it with your pattern paper, and then just cut it, trim it just a little bit shorter. And then that tag sticks right in there. Like so. And then for the final piece, this little piece here all I did was attach this with um, some double-sided tape and some washi tape so if you have your washi tape that way it can stay my washi tape never stays so I put the washi tape halfway on or wherever fill up the whole washi and then add a piece of double-sided tape to the top of the washi not going past peel off the back that way you can't see it and then that goes that would annoy me that it's not centered sorry and then that goes right up here like that and then feel free to do the same thing on the back so you can you know that can be covered but or not but yeah that's that's how I do that so mat all your papers and then you're done and as for, so that's, this is what we have. Close that up. This, of course, you have a little pocket in here that closes, and then you have your tag. So for your um, 
closure piece, I just put a magnet. I put a magnet here. I used double sided tape, added a magnet, and then I used a connecting piece to add a magnet to so that it'll close. So I put the magnet behind the pattern paper where I wanted it to go. And then the other magnet is underneath right there. So it all is hidden. Nobody can see. All right, so that should be the end of that. And then you have your cute little flip book. Really easy. Love it, love it, love it. So let me give you um, the measurements for all of the pieces. So it'll be for, for everything. It'll be the front and back of this, the front and back of this. It'll be everything that we've made here. Front and back of this, um, the front of here, the back, everything. The front and back, the front and back, front, even the tag. Uh, which we've done already and then all the way flipping all the way to the back of the book all right so get your paper and pan out paper and pencil whatever you're going to use and i'm going to give you the the listing for the mats now what i did was i cut everything i just because it's a paper pad and everything coordinates you can't go wrong so i literally just opened up the book and usually they'll have matching patterns next to each other when you open up the paper pad um, so if you're using one collection, everything will go. If, so that's how I did it. I just ripped it out and, and cut it. So here are the measurements. You'll need three pieces cut at four and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. Two pieces cut at four and three quarters by four and seven eighths. Two pieces cut at four and five eighths by four and five eighths. Two pieces cut at two and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. Two pieces cut at three and three eighths by four and seven eighths. One piece cut at four and five eighths by three and seven eighths. Two pieces cut at three and three eighths by four and three eighths. Two pieces cut at three by two and seven eighths. One piece cut at two and a half by three. That's that tiny little flap in the corner in the front of the book that we just did with the washi tape. I just use leftover scraps from all of that. So that's my little note, leftover scraps. And then you need five, one piece cut at five by three and a half and then cut on the diagonal. And that's for the pocket that's at the end. All right. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that tutorial and will try it. Let me know if you do. Tag me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, whatever. Tag me. I love to see what you created. And then also leave a comment and um let me know what city you live in or what country you live in to be eligible to win this so i don't have a use for it i'm just going to give it away so like the video if you like it guys it does not cost a thing and remember if you can vote for me on the food network there's still two weeks left i will put a link in the description box below um if you guys it takes like 30 seconds or less you just refresh vote refresh vote you can do that five times so they put out the top five i am not one of the top five but i really 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 would like the opportunity to be on chop so um hopefully you guys like the video hopefully you guys will vote try this tag me on social media subscribe if you're new and thank you guys so much for watching bye